reading from the book of Lamentations. The Lord has consumed without pity all the dwellings of Jacob. He has torn down in his anger the fortresses of daughter Judah. He has brought to the ground in dishonor her king and her princes. On the ground in silence sit the old men of daughter Zion. They strew dust on their heads and gird themselves with sackcloth. The maidens of Jerusalem bow their heads to the ground. Worn out from weeping are my eyes. Within me all is infirmity. My gall is poured out on the ground because of the downfall of the daughter of my people. As child and infant faint away in the open spaces of the town. In vain they ask their mothers, where is the grain? as they faint away like the wounded in the streets of the city and breathe their last in their mother's arms. To what can I liken or compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? What example can I show you for your comfort, virgin daughter Zion? For great as the sea is your downfall, who can heal you? Your prophets had for you false and specious visions. They did not lay bare your guilt, to avert your fate. They beheld you for you in vision, false and misleading portents. Cry out to the Lord, moan, O daughter Zion. Let your tears flow like a torrent, day and night, respite. Let there be no respite for you, nor repose for your eyes. Rise up shrill in the night, at the beginning of every watch. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to him for the lives of your little ones who faint from hunger at the corner of every street. Verbum Domini. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Why, O God, have you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your flock, which you built up of old, the tribe you redeemed as your inheritance. Mount Zion, where you look, took up your abode. Turn your steps toward the utter ruins, toward all the damage the enemy has done in the sanctuary. Your foes roar triumphantly in your shrine. They have set up their tokens of victory. They are like men coming up with axes to a clump of trees. With chisel and hammer, they hack at the, all the paneling of the sanctuary. They set your sanctuary on fire. The place where your name abides, they have raised and profaned. Look to your covenant, for the hiding places and the land and the plains are full of violence. May the humble not retire in confusion. May the afflicted and the poor praise your name. I 
Dominus vobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Mateum. Gloria When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be driven out into out the outer darkness, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, You may go as you have believed. Let it be done for you. That that very hour his servant was healed. Jesus entered the house of Peter and saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and fever left her, and she rose and waited on him. When it was evening, they brought him many who were possessed by demons, and he drove out the spirits by a word and cured all the sick to fulfill what had been said by the prophet Isaiah. He took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Verbum do. So most of us out there look at the news media for information, especially regarding the current times we're in. You know, we, we need to hear information about the pandemic. We also, you know, are curious and want to be updated about certain uh, social justice events, chaos and unrest and all that. But what we see in, in the news is we see often two sides going at each other, arguing, bickering, blaming, pointing fingers. And when we consume this, it can be very heavy on us. And what we're not seeing from these voices is no attempt to understand, no compassion for each side. It's just arguing and fighting. And many times it's going nowhere. Today, however, Jesus, Jesus shows us compassion. He shows us understanding. And it is written here, right here, right here. It says, he, Jesus the Lord who took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. What's this saying here? It's saying that we have a God of compassion, one of understanding, one who knows our sufferings, one who knows our afflictions, one who helps, one who heals. And this, my brothers and sisters, are, are, are what we are called to imitate. 
to be like Jesus, to have compassion, to understand. And this is all possible with God. He's given us the graces to do this, to be like him, to be compassion, to be mercy, to understand. So here we see Jesus himself in this gospel reading exercising compassion, showing much mercy. Well, Jesus now has come across a centurion. Now, centurions were very powerful people in the Roman Empire, particularly in the Roman army. They were honored. They were revered. They had men under their command. But they were the enemy of Israel. They were Gentiles. And, you know, the, 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 the people, the Jewish people, wanted to see them obliterated. They wanted them out of the country, overthrown. But yet, here's one who has a need. And instead of pushing him away, Jesus listens. Jesus sees his pain. Jesus understands immediately his slave is in need of healing, the centurion slave. And he comes with great faith. And Jesus heals him. Then, you know, we, we move a little further down, and we see the mother-in-law of St. Peter who has a fever. And, you know, many of the commentators will say that this fever, what, what it was, what, what most likely the condition was malaria. And so she's, she's very sick and, and suffering. Jesus comes and heals her. Of course, you know, this could have been, this was Peter, St. Peter's mother-in-law, and, you know, this may have been some relief for, for him. He may have been very concerned about, about his wife, who was worried about her, her mother, and about his mother-in-law as well. And Jesus sees that, and he brings healing, comfort. And then it says that there were many who were possessed by demons. And Jesus delivers them, sets them free. Well, you know, again, Jesus, who bores our infirmities, he, he's, he's human himself, you know, fully God, fully man, divine nature, human nature, a divine person he is. But with the, with the human nature, so he knows our suffering. He experiences everything we experience except for sin. St. Paul tells us that the Lord made him to be sin who knew no sin so that we may become the righteousness of God. What does this mean? Does this mean that he literally became a sin? No. It means that he took on sinful human flesh. Flesh that we sin in, but that he didn't sin in. The word made flesh. Because he's human. So he knows what we are experiencing. And yet by following him, by imitating him, by receiving him, we can be like him. Like the verse says, he be, he be, he who knew no sin became sin so that we may become the righteousness of God. See, he shows us how. He shows us the way to become the righteousness of God, to become holy. And in this holiness, which is love, which is compassion and mercy, right there. Jesus knows how difficult it is because he's human. He knows our sufferings. He knows our temptations. But he didn't sin. So we can have victory through him. And he will raise us up to be like him. If we desire it. And so, brothers and sisters, you know, we're, we're weighed down heavy by news, by media, by information, by all that's going on. It's, it's, it's heavy on us. You know? and, and sometimes the, the temptation for us is to want to be a part of that 
finger pointing and blaming and arguing and all of that stuff. But yet if we're so consumed in that or we're letting, us, letting it weigh us down and defeat us, we're not, we're not consumed with Jesus. We're not consumed with, with, with bringing about his compassion, his mercy, his understanding. Seeing that there, yeah, there are some people out there who, you know, who, who are involved in this unrest and rioting and, you know, the, the, the people who are blaming the politicians and all of this stuff. Why are they like that? Are we seeking to understand? Are we wanting to, to look at their brokenness and take it to prayer? This is the start of, of being compassionate here. Seeing with the eyes of Jesus Christ. Why? Looking at the big picture here. And then when we, when we look even closer at the life of Jesus, this is all he did. Looking at, at, the, at broken humanity, but he understands. And so we look at a scene at the time of the life of Jesus, when there's chaos, when there's uprising, and they're putting him to death. And, what are the, and then they put him on the cross, and what are the first words out of his mouth? Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. He's understanding. He's showing mercy. He's seeing a broken humanity there. He says, God, have mercy on them. They do not know what they're doing. What about us now? Is that our prayer too? Again, that's, that's where we start, right there. You know, that, you know, the word compassion means to suffer with. And, and are we looking deep down in the sufferings of humanity? You know, what's caused this turmoil in people? What's caused them to separate from God? What is it? So we could easily take it to prayer. And, and so there, my brothers and sisters, yeah, these, these are hard times. But we need to suffer with Jesus Christ. We need to, we need, we need to put ourselves on the cross there. And, and unite what we are experiencing with him. And when we do that, we have much more peace. And we go closer to him, and our relationship with him becomes much more intimate. But, but that needs to be done. And that's why we have St. Paul. St. Paul says that, I desire to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. See, because he... He knows that right there, there's pure love, pure compassion. He can unite himself with the suffering Lord. And mercy and charity. So there's where we need to go. Looking at other sufferings. Yeah, we all suffer. But like, again, with, with Jesus, you know, Jesus goes from from, from, from miracle to miracle. Remember, remember, like, yeah, he's a divine person, you know, he's divine nature, human nature. But he's, he's working here. You know, and he experiences tiredness. We see, remember, see him on a, in a sleep in a boat. You know? We see him taking rest many times with the Father in his own prayer. But he keeps going. Because he sees, he sees the hurt, he sees the pain. So we often have to come out of our own pain, out of our own self-absorption or self-loathing to see the hurt in others. You know, Jesus, Jesus the Lord, at one point or another, has consoled us, has comforted us. That's the, we need to bring that comfort, that consolation to, to, to others out there. That's compassion right there, you know? And people, people need to see that. And that's what St. Paul says. You know, St. Paul, of course, you know, he's he experienced all kinds of sufferings. But then he says, you know, he's been consoled by the Lord. He's close to Jesus on the cross. He wants to be crucified with him. He desires to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. 
And so he's been consoled in that, and he can console others with the same consolation he's received from the Lord. And that has got to be our words. It's time to, get, to grow up here now. Now stop falling into these things. Stop getting into self. Get in these empty arguments and just going round and round in circles and going nowhere. Time to be like Jesus. Time to wake up. And it starts again with our prayer. But, but also remembering how Jesus has had compassion on us. How he's shown us forgiveness. Where we've come from. Where he's brought us to. What he has waiting for us. We could still receive him. He still comes to us in the sacraments. How wonderful, how beautiful. That is compassion. It's God who loves us. And so, my brothers and sisters, go to Jesus now. Rest in him. Think about the times he's shown you love and mercy. Savor savor these times so that we, we too can go and exercise it. So we too can go be compassion and mercy himself just like Jesus. And when we do this, you know, we're, we're doing the will of the Father. Jesus tells us today that if we don't do this, we're going to be damned. He says right here. He says those, they will go into darkness. But thank God for, for the Lord. Thank God for, for Jesus Christ. Because it's, it's only through him who is the way, the truth, and the life that we can find our salvation, that we can, can, can be compassion and mercy itself. So, my brothers and sisters, again, know that you're loved. Know that God is with you. And follow him wherever he takes you, especially in the areas of mercy, understanding, and charity. God bless you all.